one that I had been meaning to watch, right? This is another reason I like doing these on Patreon too, because occasionally they'll give you like, you got thousands of some movies back there. You're looking for something to watch, right? And you can't decide. They decide it for you. So I really appreciate that sort of thing. And I had actually owned this one on Blu-ray, the Northman boss, which I think I got this on black Friday last year. I, and I was telling you before we started this, like, I don't think I can imagine two different movies, like two different styles of movies as these two. Yeah. I mean, one of them basically takes place in one spot and is like a melodrama. The other one is like this huge, vast, you know, action film that takes place over like different fucking it's countries. It's set in the year uh, universes. Bulls. It's just crazy, yeah. Robert Eggers, and it was really his big budget, like, studio movie. They gave him, I think it was like 30 or $40 million. I, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but, you know, gigantic budget compared to his other movies, which, you know, he did The Witch for very little money, um, and that was a big hit. And then what was the other lighthouse? That was kind of a hit as well. Low budget movie. I'll just tell you, man. And I think I've said this before and, and this movie doesn't change my mind at all. I think he's probably like the most underrated director out there right now. He's definitely in the top three. Um, I think that the witch was probably like when I first saw the witch, I was like, this is insane. Mm -hmm. like the amount of detail that he had to put into that fucking movie to make it like that, the way that it was and the, the dialogue and everything, the dialect that everyone had in that movie and just how fucking different it was than anything else. It was. And then he made the lighthouse, which I don't know if you've seen the lighthouse, but it's, I've seen scenes of it. I don't own it or anything yet. So it's like a, like an acid fever dream. Just, crazy character piece about like two people going insane basically um so that's great i did look the budget up for this the budget on this was 70 to 90 million depending yeah it on... didn't it didn't really do very well either like considering that budget no. i think it made like 70 million back i mean it's a million. it's a viking movie essentially i mean are has there been any of those that's been that successful <laughs> well when that i don't know if that one counts the, what was it what, the one Lord about the Sparta and all that shit. Uh, no. th 300. That's like a gladiator movie. Though, yeah, right? I guess that's not the same thing. Yeah. But anyway, point being is he did those movies and I love those. And then this one is like an epic. This one is like a huge fucking. I think this was supposed to be like his apocalypse now or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. this is going to be the movie that was and like they, his. They hopped this movie. This was all over TV too. So. Nobody can say that uh, the studio didn't get behind it because it was like when it came out in theaters, like, you know, it got some critically acclaimed reviews and everything, but it was just one of those movies that it's just not a mainstream hit. I mean, the, something like this, I don't, I couldn't see it being a big hit really. Um, but it is very, very well done. The cinematography in this and the shots in this, is insane it yeah. like it yeah. looks looks great it's just it's him man really i mean the cinematography it's just but he is just an amazing director at like finding shots and like you know creating like just wild shots like these things you would never even think of like these angles and the, here's but i mean to start the the idea of the movie out when I first watched about the first 20 or 30 minutes of it, I was like, ah, fuck, this is Conan. Like, they're just fucking, like, remaking Conan. It's like, uh, fucking kid. You what know? about the shot where, where, the, where the father burps and the kid farts? I was like, <laughs> what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Well, what about all the wolf shit, too? Like, with them yeah. fucking, like, drinking out of the things. And I was like, and I'm pretty sure, isn't that William Defoe in there? Like, yeah. He was like briefly in it. Yeah. So 
But nobody else looks like that. Basically, the big no, no, like they didn't show his teeth, but you could still fucking tell it was him because his face is. He's so like the um, the real life Gollum. That's what he looks like. Like if yeah, Gollum was a real person, it'd be William Defoe. <laughs> but the story is, I the, the beginning of the story is Conan. I swear to God, like if it, it just well, is like. Okay, so the uh, the legend of Amleth, it's I think Conan is, and fucking uh, the Lion King. I, I don't know a lot together. about. Yeah, I don't know a lot about like uh, <laughs> Viking folk tales or anything like that, but there I did look something up that it is based on the legend of Amleth or something like that. So that may be what Conan was based on too. Yeah, um, I mean, I I'm just saying that anybody that watches this movie for the first little while is going to immediately think of Conan if you're like any kind of movie fan. Because, something that, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, it's just, it's the story of the basic story is a kid and his dad and like the dad's awesome, whatever. The uncle kills the dad in front of the kid. And who's king. He, yeah, who's he's king. king and, yeah. Yeah. And he swears like a blood oath revenge on, you know, the, that's his destiny is to get revenge for the murder that's the opening kind of part of it now where it like really like differs from conan is like it's like a lot more realistic to kind of like that time period and like what was going on and, and a lot a lot more kind of if you think about it it's a lot more um what's the word like not depressing graphic. but yeah graphic and just hyper realistic to what the what they did um as opposed to like conan and the further along the movie goes the more and more it becomes like its own thing and the more and more you start to see like it's like it's a movie about that but it's also a movie about like um how like you view things at certain periods of time in your life and then you go like later on and view things and they're different right. And how you find out things about people that you thought you knew, but like you really didn't know. And his, I guess his uncle became king because he would have been the next in line. And they, they lied and said the boy had died or whatever drowned. And he really just kind of ran off to live with other, like, I think they said berserkers or something like that, which yeah. that's killer. Usk! Usk! <laughs> yeah. Um, he but he's the main all, one. he he's always got you know the revenge on his mind to come back and you know avenge his uh, his father and everything, and it's kind of telling that story like his uncle uh, ended up killing his dad and ended up losing the the throne anyway, right? He was uh, he was a sheep farmer or something, so he had the idea of you know, kind of playing one of the, the slaves that were coming there to work for him or whatever as a way to get close to the family and um, you know, just kind of starts picking them off. And the, well, yeah. the final battle at the, at the end was fucking very epic and the way it was filmed and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not a, I'm definitely not an expert on, these sort of movies or anything, but I do normally like them. And this was a longer movie, but it really didn't feel like it. I think it had a great flow to it. Um, you know, great cast as well. Hammerheads in this. Hammerheads in over. It. Yep. Uh, Nicole Kidman is also in this as well. Looking very, I was so artificial. glad what happened to her ass at the end. I was like, God damn, I wish somebody do that for real. I can't fucking stay in Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Can somebody just, <laughs> Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise bulls. So Hammerhead is like the love interest in the movie for She's just another slave, yeah. yeah, that they meet yeah. while they're so you find out like a bunch of stuff about her late late in the movie, but like she is the love interest, and I think she is the part of the film where things start to like get more complicated because like he throughout his whole life has had this idea of like the only thing was revenge, right? But then he finds love and he's trying to decide like which one is more, you know, important to him. 
And ultimately, I don't know. I mean, I guess we already talked about the end of the movie, really. Like, so you kind of know what's going to happen. Like, if there's an epic fucking battle at the end of the movie, then you know what he chose to do. Mm-hmm. But we're giving all kinds of shit away. Yeah, it's this idea that you could never really like escape your own fate in a way. Like, so his, you know, he knew from the very beginning that his fate was to face this guy and like get revenge for his father. And he comes to this realization, like where he's like with her. And he's getting ready to leave with her and like on this boat, she wants him to leave. They're going to have, a, they're going to start a family. And if he would have just fucking like, you know, walked away, he could have had the family and all that. But ultimately it's his fate to mm-hmm. face that guy. And if not, then Valhalla is going to fucking piss all over him or something. Something bad's going to happen with Valhalla. Um, yeah, and uh, Alexander Skarsgård is the Amleth in the movie, the the prince, I guess, in the beginning or whatever, grown up. And he's just the ultimate badass and everything. And then old Hammerhead kind of softens him up a little <laughs> bit. And he looks, you know, What's her name, man? He, he looks at life a little bit differently thanks to her and has some some other reason to exist other than avenging his father's death from decades earlier. Right. But spoiler alert here too. If anybody's watching and wants to check this movie out, definitely you know, skip this part. But I thought that they would leave it more open to a sequel where he actually tries to take the throne of the king back. Right. So that would made sense for the sequel to move forward and try to take his kingdom back and everything. But they kind of just kind of forgot about that. I think. Yeah. And I kind of knew because it's Robert Eggers that it wasn't going to end well. Like (laughs) I just had that feeling that like, no matter what, like there wasn't going to be a, a, like a, well, I guess there is a happy ending, but not, not in this realm, not a Hollywood ending. That's for sure. No. Um, I did ma- think that last, th- that last sequence, uh, the last, let's say five, 10 minutes of the film is fucking amazing. Everything about that. Like now, had you seen this movie before or was this the first time you watched it? was the first time I've ever seen it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was very impressed with it and all of the, you know, like I said, the witch, I've seen the witch three or four times. Love that. And I'm sure the lighthouse I'll enjoy as well, but yeah, I mean this. I don't know if you enjoy the lighthouse or not, really, but like it's so fucking crazy, man. Like, yeah, I had fun with this one though. I thought that this was a great movie. Again, it's something very different than what we would normally look at or review, but it kind of took me back there the first time I saw like the the Lord of the Rings movies and got into them or whatever. It's very along those lines. They, they look similar. The movies do. Um, yeah. And, um, it's just a lot of fun and it's two and a half. What is it? It's close to two and a half hours long. That really just, yeah. it flows. It doesn't there's feel a lot, like it's too long. There's a lot of really great cinematography. There's a lot of really great sets. There's a lot of really great, like, um, fantasy kind of elements to it that you haven't seen in movies like that in a long time. Like those epic kind of fantasy movies, like you're talking about Lord of the Rings and stuff where everything is like the landscape is just amazing. And, and they have these long shot wide shots and everything. And not only that, but there's also like um, all these like weird fucking trippy psychedelic scenes of him, like thinking about like having flashbacks about things and thinking about things and you can't tell if it's like him losing his mind or if it's you know some sort of gods telling him all this stuff to do this stuff and and it's just bizarre but it's robert egger so i mean it makes sense in the kind of films that he does like all this makes sense so yeah he's a guy that has a vision that's what i like about him like you could you could tell that this was his film even though it wasn't like anything that he'd ever done. Yeah. So So. the box office on this, it was a budget of 70 to $90 million. It made 69.6 million. Um, so I mean, it didn't, 
I don't it, know if it was a complete, the bed per se. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't a complete bomb, but it wasn't a huge money maker. It either. didn't do what they wanted it to do, though. I mean, yeah, they they wanted it to be a massive success, and I mean, I just don't know if movies like this now could could be like a million dollar box office, like a hundred million dollar box office movie. No. Um, but I had fun with it. I am looking forward to seeing, you know, what he does next, which is the Nostrato, mo- Nostrato movie, which is supposed to be coming out sometime later this year. I think Christmas Day is what it's scheduled for of 2024. Oh, man. So that that's very interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, that's the Northman, boss. Give us the thumbs up. Off you butt. Like subscribe and if you subscribe here's something else you can do once you subscribe you can click the bell notification right and it'll notify you anytime that dead pit puts up new shit or don't I really don't give a fuck I want you to I want you to (laughs) let's keep our community growing here on YouTube I don't like it I don't want you to do nothing listen I need to do that no don't you dare touch it Thumbs up, subscribe, and click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirts on T Public. There are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Deadpit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1. We ain't-